What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is prove to you why knowing your Pythagorean identities is so important to be able to verify an identity that looks something like this. Now, the other thing that you should also know is the difference of two squares, okay? So the main thing here I want you to understand here is a squared minus b squared is equal to an a minus b times an a plus b, right? Now, the reason why this is important is because if I had like an a to the fourth minus a b to the fourth, I can still use the difference of two squares. It's now just gonna be an a squared minus a b squared times an a squared plus a b squared, okay? So immediately when I look at this problem and I see the difference of two numbers raised to an even power of the same power, I recognize, aha, I can use my difference of two squares. Now, the important thing about using the difference of two squares or rationalizing a trigonometric function is knowing your Pythagorean identities. You have to know your Pythagorean identities. Now, the first one everybody should have memorized is a sine squared of theta plus a cosine, uh, let's use x's, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. Now, that is the most important. I think every student should have this memorized. But any anyways, if you wanna be able to figure out what the other identities are, just go ahead and divide by certain numbers, right? You Or certain functions. Like if you divided by a sine squared of theta on both sides, right? You would have, have a one plus a um, cotangent squared of theta equals a cosecant squared of theta. And if you had a sine squared of theta plus a cosine squared of theta is equal to one, let's say you divided everything by a cosine squared of theta, everything by that um, on the left and on the right hand side, then you would have a tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to a secant squared of theta, right? So those are your Pythagorean identities. Make sure you know them. Now, we don't need to know these other two, right? I just kind of like, I don't know, decided, decided to become a teacher here and just like over teach. So the main thing though, I want you to understand is, all right, here we have my difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and expand this out. Now, if I was gonna expand this out using trigonometry, uh, I'm sorry, using the difference of two squares, I would get a cosine squared of X minus a sine squared of X times a cosine squared of X plus a sine squared of X, right? And that's gonna be all over a cosine squared of X. Now. If you believe Pythagorean identities are really important and you know your Pythagorean identities, then you will recognize that, uh-oh, what is this? What is cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta? What is sine squared of theta plus a cosine squared of theta? It's one, guys, right? Commutative property of addition doesn't matter, you know, three plus four, four plus three, the order does not matter. So guys, this is equal to a one. So now what I have in my identity on this right-hand side, which again, I'm trying to make equal to one minus a tangent squared of theta, is I have a cosine squared of x minus a sine squared of x all over a cosine squared of x, all right? Now, the cool thing about here is when you have a um, an expression in the numerator all divided by one term, you can divide this term into both these expressions. So therefore, I have a cosine squared of x all over a cosine squared of x minus a sine squared of x all over a cosine of x. Now you can see that this is going to simplify to one minus a tangent squared of x. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you're verified, now your identity has been verified and hopefully you remember these Pythagorean identities. I hope this video was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.